and welcome to the Shanti Show. Hey. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Great. Nice to see you, Harrison Blake Young. Nice to this be here. Harrison Blake Young, everybody. So meet him. And how do you introduce yourself? What do you do for a living? Well, uh, I'm a dabbler, I guess you could say. I, uh, I do freelance videos. I host a TV talk show like you're doing right now. I'm a writer. I'm a poet. I'm a free spirit. Um, I'm a philosopher. And uh, I'm a salesperson. So I guess you can, I'm a combination of all of the above. I'm a multifaceted individual. And that's what, that's how it is, basically. And there's no particular order in which I do it except as needed. Very good, very good. <laughs> and how did you get started in your show, Topic Time? Okay, Topic Time with Harrison Young. Began officially on Wednesday, August 18th, 2010. But how I got started was kind of an interesting story. I mean, I always say everything happens for a reason, and I think, uh, me wanting to soundproof my house because of a neighbor's barking dog and it ended up with me doing poetry on WATD, which is a radio station on the South Shore of Boston, and uh, a gentleman named Joe O'Neill, who hosted a TV talk show in the same town, was uh, in there one day when I was actually helping with the TV uh, radio talk show, hosted by one Bill Wilhelm, and he thought I seemed knowledgeable in sports. So he asked me to be his co-host. I said, you want me to be on TV? I, I had actually done newscasting in the early 90s on a local station in, in the city that I live in. Wow. Oh yeah, I mean, I did some reports, but I never actually went solo, except when he asked me to do it. And I said, you gotta be kidding. You want me to host the show, or co-host your show? And then, to, to make it even more interesting, the night that I was supposed to start his show, Wednesday, June 10th, 2009, he couldn't make it in, so I had to, I had to solo. And ultimately, to make a, a, a long story even shorter, he ended up throwing me off the show to create differences in, a, in kind of an amicable way. But then, then I ended up starting my own show a year later, and we, you know, we still are, we're friends. We still are today. We help each other out, and that's how it started, basically. And since then, I've interviewed probably over 300 people, including yourself. And you on my show now. I'm on yours, and I'm so honored to be here. So that's basically it in a nutshell. Yeah, it was great to be on your show, and thank you so much for having me. It's great to have you on my show. And what did you do as a kid that set you apart from other kids? Uh, I pretty much stayed by myself and was isolated. I was fat, and nobody liked me. Oh. But at the same time, I was I was interesting. I had an inner sense of things that were going on that most people didn't think about, but I used to, I, like I do today, I brought out things that most people don't talk about, and ultimately that led to me writing, sitting by myself doing a lot of writing. I won a writing essay contest in 1969 at the age of 10. I won a camera. Uh, I also tried my, I played the piano for seven years. I had a piano teacher. He's still alive today at 82. He's, you know, this is amazing because we started taking lessons almost 50 years ago back on the uh, Monday, December 27th, 1965. So if you want to get to my photographic memory, that's fine. And then, ultimately, I, uh, you know, I just kind of went my own way. I decided to uh, learn to, you know, hone my skills as I got older. I did a little book of poems in 1978 when I was 19. Just a little pamphlet. People thought they were great. And I'd always wanted to be, like, interesting. I also got a pilot's license that year as well. 1977, the year I graduated from high school. Um, I almost got killed trying to fly though, so I gave it up. Oh yeah, it's, it's not easy. It's not a. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Why? Why? I'm not, I, mean, I didn't get killed. I said I'm almost. Glad you're here. Right, exactly. Oh gosh. Well, I almost got killed three weeks ago in a car accident too, but Same I'm still. Same here. Right? Didn't you know that? Three weeks ago? No, I didn't know that. Are you okay? Yeah, but I got to... Well, you're I, here today, so you're okay. I've been all over Facebook for the past three weeks, absolutely. Oh, my gosh. Oh, well, I have so many friends that my, my new feed doesn't get put in the order that it should be. Okay. How I'd like it to be. So I, I, I follow people that like you. Right. I'm one of your followers. If you go check it up, I'm there. Okay. And I like to follow you because you're interesting. Yep. And you, I love Thank your you. show. Thank you. And it's great to have you here. And I just want to like emphasize that Facebook doesn't show enough of what I really want to see. So I wanted to know about this. You are truly a perfectionist. I didn't see it. Thank you very much. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I, right now I have a beautiful new white Subaru. I, I think it's called an Ion that's in that parking garage that I just bought the other day. So far, no, I mean, what happened that day, May 25th, was that I was driving up in Pepper. I've been hiking in New Hampshire and some lady came to a stop sign and nailed me on the way back. 
Yeah, we both. We, and I almost opted not to be. The first responder came up to me and said, "You wanted medical treatment, and I will take you to the hospital." And I said, "I think I'm okay." And they go, "We've just been in a bad accident." Like all of a sudden, I had a little pain of pain in my lower right abdomen. I said, "Okay, you can take me." And I was lucky. No, the doctor thought it might have been a punctured liver. It was not. It was not even a, a fracture. So. My parents came and got me, blessed them, and they, you know, they're still with me in their late 70s and wow. brought me home, so Great. went to the car for a couple of weeks, and that's it. So basically, since, and even then, I went and I was in a film, in a web series up in New Hampshire since with the rental car back on May 31st called Battle Gods, in which, now let me just explain about topic time and some of the perks I get, and you can go back to my childhood if you want to eventually, but we can, we, we can go back and forth. I know you're doing like a 20 to 30 minute bit. But talk, talk of Time has gotten me many opportunities to be in a lot of film projects that other people are in, that, that are creating. So I got, when I interview other people, they give, they give me the opportunity to appear as extra, an extra in their particular project, whether it's a music video or film or web series. And I've literally traveled all over New England. I've been in videos and films and those things in five different states in the last two years. And I'm still waiting for more, you know, more events. I'm, I'm going to be in a film festival this coming Saturday. All That's because great. of Papa's Time. That's great. All because of Papa's Time. All because of Time. Oh, wow. So, wow. I, don't know, I don't know where the path will take me, but we will see. So, but, speaking of topic Time yep. and your photographic memory, yep. can you explain to me, or explain to folks what that really encompasses so they can know a little bit more about it and how accurate you are with dates and everything. Okay, how well, I, it encompasses no, a, couple, a couple of things. Number one, OCD, I've got that in a big way, or just compulsive disorder. Number two, I've got... And I want to eliminate the stigma for stuff like that. Oh, it's a great thing. It's not a bad thing to have as long as, you, as, long as you're not obsessive and compulsive about doing destructive things, which I'm not. Yeah. And I have Asperger's too, but this has enabled me, This is, I was diagnosed with this in 2003, but what it has enabled me to do is to focus on what, what interests me a lot, and what a lot interests me a lot is remembering the calendar and knowing where I was on a certain day and time. I've been doing it since I was a little kid, so a comfort thing. It's kind of a yes, exactly. I didn't I know something. I never would have worded it that way, but you're absolutely right, Chanti. It is a comfort thing. You know, it's it's most people don't care, but me. But it can be. It can actually be kind of a kind of like a like a, a way to show myself off at times. And people, some people are interested. You know. So many people that have, that have been born since I started this habit of mine of remembering dates, and when I tell them, like, what, like knowing the day you were born and what I did that day on yeah. Valentine's Day, 1989, and it was a Tuesday, and, and how I was attracted to this young girl named Bridget Riley, who was a student at my college, which is Curry, and uh, I left her a Valentine's Day card in her box. It was kind of an overcast day, but a very mild one. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. And then, and no, That's math. what I imagine. That's what I remember. I kind of remember being born. Yeah, I, I kind of remember being conceived. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's pretty wild, too. That is wild. Yeah, it is. So, all right, go on. You want to ask him more questions? You want, I, I mean, yeah, I, I, yeah. I gave, I gave up. I gave, well, what did you say? I took piano lessons. I gave up piano lessons and flying for similar reasons, but different ones. In other words, I gave up flying because it was too dangerous. I gave up piano lessons because I didn't think I was going to be good enough to, be a, you know, even though I was told I was a great talent. And I, yeah, always believe. I, I know. I, I it, But, you know, remember, too, when you're younger, you... You, you know, you can't commit yourself to stuff. I became more interested in sports. I played a little baseball as a kid, and but I was heavy, so I never. I, I mean, I was, high, I was. I had a hard time joining things and sticking with them. I kind of wish now I I stuck up. I done little league because I was good in baseball. Um, even though I was getting picked on for being a, a porker, which I was at the time, I still might have uh, made, made an impression. I don't know if I would have become a major leaguer, but uh, right now I play a baseball game in my own living room every day, which is part of my that I invented, part of my own exercise ritual. Yeah. It helps me, you know, keep my head sharp and numbers and whatnot. Stay fit. Right, and it keeps me fit. So that's it. So now I'm doing the show, and before that I did both sports writing. Um, I, I covered sports for a local newspaper in 1987. Um, I did a little sports casting. I also, I got my first film role in 1997 in Amistad, which is a major film directed by Spielberg. He yelled at me on the set on March 22nd. Oh my God. Yeah, he was, uh, he was quite a character. He, he was a perfectionist, but I was doing a dated scene where I was a member of the House of Representatives in 1839, and all I did was say, is he okay, me and John Quincy Adams, a.k.a. Anthony Hopkins. Oh, wait a minute, yeah, Anthony Hopkins who played him on that Saturday afternoon at Spielberg. We should have made, made it clear to us that in the 20th century, we didn't say okay in 1839, overlooked that little detail and fired me and got mad. Oh, wow. But 11 years later, in 2008, I had my... I had a role in a big movie in Shutter Island when I played a mental patient who wrote up once to play oh, with wow. the same yeah. 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 So, 
Wow, I can't believe you were in Shutter Island. I saw that movie. I loved it. I, I believe I remember you in it. You had a I was in it for about a space in right? a second. I, I had a, they, they really cut me out. They paid me a lot. They paid me 650 bucks after tax. Wow. I was basically, I had two scenes in the winter and the summer. March 13, 2008, it was a Thursday. That's the scene with Scorsese directed. Now, you may have made, I think I may have told you this. You're familiar with Sarah Silverman, the comedian? Yeah. She is my cousin. Yeah, I remember that. Right. Well, the guy, the woman that played the nurse that escorted me across the floor at the May Medfield State Hospital, which is a former mental hospital, which now it's a contem condemnable set of buildings, but the townspeople use it anyway for stuff like this. Yeah. She told, she worked with Sarah out in L.A., and she called Scorsese, I was her cousin, and Scorsese said, oh, I can see the family resemblance. So I always thought that was an awesome little exchange that between is... Martin and myself. Wow. All right. Bill Harrison. That was the winter scene. Then in the summer, we were outside in a day kind of like this. Almost, it was almost six, six years ago to the day. It was June 25th and 26th of 2008. I was actually asked to massage an azalea bush in the yard. And that wow. scene, for like 10 hours, ended up netting me about $450. And, and, nice. and DiCaprio worked right alongside of me. He looked at me like he thought I was the real McCoy, like a real mental patient. It was great. That was great. Hey, are you sad, by the way? Sad? Sad. Oh no, I'm not. I'm not. Okay, you're not union. No, I'm none of that. None of the above. But if you have, but if you have any films you want me to appear in, I'm a quirky actor. I've been in several indie films since that time, including, including like I said, five different projects. Music, two music videos. One, I was in, I was in this uh, web series called Paragods. I had to speak up in New Hampshire. I was I had to speak in a role called just in, a, in another web series called Just Another Day, off the topic time, and. Uh, I'm also, I was also in a, a film that hasn't come out yet called DJ Stand the Man, and you're Frankie and Bergamo, who you interviewed as one of the stars of that. Matt Fisher, I, I don't know if you've ever interviewed him. He's a big director in our area. Um, no, I have not. Okay. You might want to talk to him. He's, he's, he's a full-length full feature, feature film, so I did a couple of scenes in that in 2012 and 2013. And um, I, I was in a couple, like I said, I was in a music video in Connecticut in 2013, in the middle of the night. I was in an Empire music video. Wow. And I, I interviewed that band, and I was also in a um, music video in Massachusetts, and right in the South Shore in Hanover. And that, that came out at the beginning of 2014. Wow. And it's called Modern Lizard. So that's it. So. What do you do when you're 18 for a pilot series? I basically, a pilot series? You mean for license? Yeah. Okay, well, I soloed at the Taunton Airport in East Taunton, Mass., yeah. which is on, located, I believe, at 400 Middleborough Ave. And I got my I got my student pilot's license on Saturday, October 8, 1977, when I sold with a plane for the first time. Then I ended up flying by myself all over New England, uh, and it was a really awesome experience. Wow. But I had a, between the between, I'll be honest with you, I flunked the written test, which would have enabled me to get my private ticket, so I never took passages. And that's when I kind of gave it up. But that between that and almost getting killed a few times, yeah. like I did on March 11, 1978, which was a Saturday, and I was coming back from the Cape, and I'm going over. The, going over Fall River Mass and I almost collided with an oncoming plane. The other guy was going in the wrong the wrong altitude for the direction. So I gave it up between that and safety. My parents were very happy I gave it up. I had a lot of great experiences. I'm going. glad you gave it up. Yeah, I, I am too. I am. I can still fly if I wanted to. All I gotta do is get, get my medical update upgrade, but I'm not gonna and then I have to pass a, you know an examination. Yeah. But I'm not about to do that. Yeah, don't do risk life. Like life right. I'm happy things. doing my show writing and doing shows like this and doing films and yeah. music videos and whatnot, web series. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. And what about in the 80s when you dabble in sportscasting? I, 1987, I went on, there's, a, there's a, an annual event called Sportscasters Camps of America, which is held all over the country and hosted by a guy named Roy Engelbrecht. And I wanted to be a sportscaster in the mid '80s, so I went to. That's basically what got me started in the clouds. Right, I attended Mount Ida and Curry. You know, I, I actually graduated Curry the year you were born, 1989. Oh wow! Yeah, and um, but what happened was in 1987 when I did this, I actually there's another thing that I found was a little risky because believe it or not, when you do sportscasting, your voice, your voice is a very liable. liable a, a, a commodity in your body, and I ended up wrecking myself. You have to learn to talk to your diaphragm. First, I got a terrible case of laryngitis. Then I ended up thinking I broke a rib, and it turned out I just oh. had a very strained larynx. Yeah. So I went to the hospital. Okay. When I got back from 1987, on, on actually it was actually the day, it was July 5th. It was I think it was Thursday, July 5th, 1987. I went to the hospital to get checked out. Wow. Yeah, I was, I was in a lot of pain. Yeah. I had a great time, and I said, I guess sports casting isn't for me. But then the following. Spring in 1988, I did some sports writing. I kind of dated my editor. She was cute, named Joni, <laughs> with the local paper I wrote for. Yeah, we had one date. Nothing ever came of it, unfortunately. Yeah. But I, 
Smith. And then when it began, I had no idea, it wasn't until the late 90s, 1999, that it would be a, a full-length a full length book that I had. I didn't think I had, I'd have the wherewithal to, to stay with it and do it, but it came out. And I may have given you a copy of the day I interviewed you. you I, did. I did, yeah. yeah. So called Thank George. Thank you. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I You're enjoyed welcome. it. Great. So everyone this, should read it and check it out. George Joy's with a cutting edge. With a cutting edge. Yeah. It's got a picture of a chef with a knife on the front and, the, and yours truly's mug on the back at age 40, which was 15 years ago. Now I have to believe. Oh wow. But I feel I good. Know, time flies, doesn't it? it? Does. Tell me about it. Yeah. So, so I mean, you've done so much, and then in the 90s, your book of short stories. Also in the 90s, when you made your film debut. Yep. So that's great. And then we can focus on the 2000s and the present, including, you know, what you're going to be doing in the future. Okay, well, like I said, next Saturday, I'm going to be in some... I was actually in an Emerson film earlier this year. I hate... As a vegan and a vegetarian, I don't usually do this, but I, I actually... I cut up a toy teddy bear as a crazy guy that was supposed to be in his mid-50s. Now, the guy that... The two people that created this film, these people at Emerson are very talented people. They come from all over the country. Yeah. There's a guy named, his name is Jonathan Tabrigiano. He was from Bratton, Louisiana, 20 years old. Yeah. And his, and his partner, his protege, some guy named Nick or something. I can't think of his first name, but he did all the lighting. I went to their apartment and did two scenes, and apparently he got an A on the project, so I'm just waiting for the DVD to come out of that. Yeah, that's, what, that's that was great. A little, yeah, right. So I'm always looking for more stuff on online for films. So that's probably what I'll be doing. I'll be hosting the show. I'll be looking for... I interviewed a guy named Joe Lagarde, who was very well known in Boston because he's, he's known as the guy from Boston and he had, a, he had a radio talk show on WTKK, which used to be a, an FM talk station, which is now a music station. Yeah. And he, um, in Saturday afternoons, I used to listen to him on many a topic time, on way to many a topic time interview in my car. Wow. And then I was on it when I got to interview him. And hopefully he will set me up with some really well-known people like the, like the Family Brothers who created the movie to something about Mary that my cousin Sarah was in. Yeah. The Andelmans, who was the, was the son of Eddie Andelman. They have the TV show Phantom, Gour uh, Phantom Gourmet. You might have seen it. They host the Three Stooges yeah. Marathon on New Year's Eve. They have their celebrities That's in their own right. Yeah. He's also friends with Scott Brown, the, you know, the senator now in New Hampshire, well, formerly in Massachusetts. I might be able to interview him. I might be able, hopefully, his daughter, Ayla. I'd love to. You know, she was on, on the American Idol show. Oh, wow. Yeah, well. she was. Yeah. Great. Right. So, so yeah. hopefully, Joe, they might interview with Joe will get me some, you know, much bigger bigger people to interview. And um, between that and films, I hope to, I mean, I don't know, like I said, I don't know where it'll take me. I'm just trying to have fun and, you know, get, get, get noticed, get my foot in the door, get some, you know, real a real good career with in the media of some kind, whether it's acting, interviewing, or both. And we'll, we'll just see what happens. Well, I've done a lot of things I never would have thought possible in my short my short life so far. Yeah, I mean, you just, there's so many amazing things, and yeah. you're in the Roman Vangeli film. We that's right. Last that. week, you want to mention? That's right. I mentioned that you, you mentioned you thought he was a great director, director, and you were in his, you were in Killing Time. You and I were both in Killing Time. Yeah, we were in Killing Time together. Right, and I get killed off, and yep, you, you didn't. Yeah, you played a military person, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, a short-lived military person, and. Uh, like I mentioned to you when I came, I might as well quote, quote Did myself. Did I kill you? Or? No, you didn't. No, there was a guy that killed me. You, know, you, were, you carried a gun, but you were killing the, you were killing the Russian killed mobster. Yeah. yeah. But the guy that killed me was another, was a, I think he was an, an enemy combatant or something. But Roman said to me the other day, I was in a bar scene. And I was also in a, I was also in a John uh, DePue film earlier this year, too. Oh, wow. And I, I, played, I was in a little, I was, it was called Crack the Box and Maisie back in February where uh, a pimp, his girlfriend, a drug dealer, his girlfriend, and her pimp were all in a, had a very dramatic scene in a restaurant or a, a little diner up in Haverhill, Mass. And I was sitting. Right, I didn't have a speaking role, but I think my facial expressions were great considering I was sitting. I first of all, I made sure when I, when I don't have a speaking role and I'm right next to where the action is. Yeah. And I, and I looked scared like I was supposed to, and it came out really good. Yeah. And then you know, so now I get that, and then you know. Then obviously, I, what Roman said to me the other day was, didn't when you were killing Tom? And I go, yeah, you killed me off and made my summer. Basically, <laughs> so I my summer. So, yeah. so just another boss scene in Pawtucket, Rhode Island, and that was my last call, I think. But again, I, I see many more between now and, you know, whenever I have, have no more strength left to do anything, which is a long, long way from now, I'd say, based on how I'm feeling. Yeah. So, that's it. That's great. I mean, are you looking for a SAG? Waivers? Talk me for work. That's what I. That's All right. Thank you again. Take care. Bye bye.